Welcome. Today I'm going to make a gravestone with an owl sitting on it. I've never done anything like this. It's an experiment. I'm a very beginner level chainsaw guy. So be nice in the comments. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. But I figured I'd take you along and uh, show you how I'm going to do it. So I've got a four foot piece of white pine. And I've kind of measured out. This is going to end up being a gravestone. So there's going to be a slab, like, you know, the actual gravestone. This is all going to be blank space, and the owl's going to be sitting on that side of it. He's going to be a little over a foot high, and then the rest will be a slab, and I'm going to leave, like, a little thing on the bottom. So, let me show you a picture. I'm making this for a friend for their Halloween party, and it's going to try to look something like this. So, it's got an owl sitting on the top with the base. We will see how this comes out, and there will probably be lots of changes. <laughs> So for the block out, um, I am mainly using this 80 volt, uh, this is an 18 inch bar from Greenworks. So I mainly use this thing for living, but it, it did, you know, everything I do is on electric. I don't use gas saws. So you need kind of a heavy duty. This is equivalent to about a 40 cc uh, saw. It cuts really well as long as the blade's in good shape. And then for the carving, I'll be using the steel with a carving bar on it from Canon a 12 inch cannon dime bar and I use the trend helmet worth the money that thing's awesome before I get going I'm gonna show you a little tip that's really helped me as a beginning chainsaw carver um, put a level on your block out saw because what this does is it lets me keep a straight cut and you won't you'll be surprised like if you see this little bubble where my thumb is you keep it in the middle while you make your cuts and is don't watch the blade just watch the bubble the whole cut and you'll get a perfectly straight cut. It's helped me so much because normally when I cut, I pull to one side. It doesn't come out level. Putting that little, whatever, this $2 level on here has made all the difference in my cuts being nice and straight. Like, here's all my logs. And they were pretty much, you know, pretty good for electric saw all the way across. Um, now... I might not have uh, stringed them level, but all of them are nice and smooth in one cut. So I uh, I probably could get a better at leveling it to make it completely flat. But, you know, I always carve the tops off these things, so it really doesn't matter. Like, the bottom's level enough. Anyway, that really helped. I thought I'd point that out for any beginner. By the way, if you're trying to learn how to carve, um, go to Carving Fusion, Jordy Johnson's page. Uh, I learned a ton there, and the owl I'm going to be doing is pretty much what I learned from Jordy. Okay, so I've carved some of this away. I don't have a tripod, so I can't really film myself carving, so you're just going to have to go step by step here. Um, this should be the grave, but my issue is this. I'm trying to make a barred owl, right? So I'm using this book to get a good perspective, and if I want to kind of keep it accurate, they're 20 inches high. So it is going to eat up most of the gravestone and I'm going to have to drop the actual gravestone down to just a small area which is kind of a waste on all this cutting I did. I don't know. I don't know if I should make just an unrealistic small owl and stick them on top or keep them nice and big and just do a smaller gravestone. I'm not sure what to do here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start to shape the stone. So I've, I've got that sort of, you know, like there's a, a neural here or whatever you call that thing. Um, but what the decision was is because I kind of set this out too low. I'm going to make a broken gravestone. So he's sitting on like the broken part. Because it's supposed to be a scary Halloween gravestone. So why not just destroy this game, you know, gravestone and make it into pieces. So to cut the owl, what you're going to do is... Uh, Jordy uses this method. I think he got it from Brian Cook, which is also a really good channel. Um, what you're going to do is kind of draw a triangle on the back side. And then you're going to draw a triangle up front, like you're a scoop. Scoop. And then from the side, scoop. So this whole piece right here will kind of be scooped out in a concave motion. So that's where I'm going to start. Alright, so I jumped ahead here. I had a lot of blocking out. 
Um, the owl is life size, but he's he's a big owl. Like I took the measurements out of the book, so I guess the great horns are really big, bigger than I thought. He's a little more square than I like. I'm gonna try to fix some of that in sanding. And what I did is I uh, I I made some design flaws. Okay, so I like the null thing here. But what it did was make doing the feet dim impossible. It was really hard to get in there with tools. So the feet are not as good as I'd like them. I think if I were to do this again, I'd flip-flop them so his feet hang off the edge. And then I could do a much better job of getting in there. Uh, just, you know, I'm experimenting. It's kind of poor planning, I guess. But I learned something. So that's about it. I'd like them a little rounder. I'm going to try to round them out. And, uh, and then I'll put some messages on the gravestone. Probably just a name and a bunch of creepy cracks. Because, like, here I I, I kind of went too far, but actually that works okay. Because you see how it's a flat surface? The water needs somewhere to drain. So I'll probably just make them into decorative cracks. And they can set a pumpkin on there or something like that for the party. It'll be cool. Alright, so I had some design changes. Uh... Rounded him out a lot more, took some of his face down so he's not blocky. Rounded his wings a bit. And uh, you get a better idea what the gravestone is going to look like. I still have to finish the base. I'm probably just going to do rocks around that. And on the back, I haven't decided what I want to do with this. I'm probably going to ask the people what they want written. Like maybe, you know, uh, trusted the government or something funny. <laughs> like, why did they die? All right. Other than that, I think the owl's about done. I, um, oh, I forgot to mention. So I did mostly chainsaw, but I came in here with a Dremel. And I'll show you. So I went old school and did the Dremel with the flame burr here. Did it with that. And... This old 8100, which is like a battery-powered one. And I did a lot of the detail work with this round wheel. Also on an 8100. I don't even know if they make these anymore. I got them on clearance at the Mart. I have these out, but I haven't used them yet. Because uh, what happened is this wood was so soft that I think this thing would have just torn it open. So I had to go in real gentle. And uh, I used this Blue Eddy outside with a battery. And this is an old school RTX. With, and this is how I did the letters. I did a half round extreme burr. Uh, that seemed to work pretty good. It gave it kind of a handwritten. I wanted it to look like, you know, someone made this in the 17th century or something. Anyway, I hope it turned out cool. We'll see where it goes. Oh, one other thing that was a real good design flow idea was um, by making this a broken tombstone any kind of flaws I had with cuts too deep and stuff, I just made them a feature. I just made them into cracks and colored them in. And that uh, that seemed to save like a lot of headache. By making a haunted gravestone, this was way better. So I decided to uh, finish the base kind of like a stone. I'll show you it in a minute, but one thing in case you forget is to uh, really scorch the bottom because this will keep it from rotting as much. This is green wood, so it's going to be all sappy, and it's going to run, and it's going to crack. But the uh, this seems to help. It's kind of like painting the ends. You know, if you uh, cut a tree down, if you paint the ends, it keeps it from cracking as much. So burning it sort of works the same way. Uh, anyway, don't forget to do that. It'll really help. All right, it's done, I think. I think we're there. So I decided to go with, like, an octagon base. And I tried to make it look all cracked and messed up. And what this let me do is put some drainage cracks in here. Every crack I put, I made sure that it's at an angle so the water will drain out. And this is something I learned from watching Jordy Johnson. That you need to plan ahead how your, how your sculpture is going to drain. And by making this a cracked pedestal, I was able to put drainage everywhere. So hopefully this will last a lot longer. Um, here's what I do at the back. Get a little idea of what he looks like and what the pedestal looks like. And I took some chips out of the side just to make it look a little more busted up. 
I think it came out pretty good for my very first try at this. Um, I It was a lot of difficult cuts. Now I learned a lot, and I would probably do a couple things different. But I think they will like this gift. I mean, wouldn't you like to have a gift like this? It's pretty, pretty pimp. Okay, so uh, stick with me. I'll keep putting up carvings as long as the weather holds. And thanks so much. I appreciate you guys tuning in. There he is. Woot. 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 All right, I take it back. I, uh, I decided to go back in and do some more coloring. It's really hard to burn in between. There's just not a lot of room. you got to scorch it. Uh, so hopefully that brings the owl out a little more. I kind of thought he blended with the tombstone too much. So I went back and did some shading. Here's how it came out at night. Get a little better idea. So you can see like the underlighting and the, the owl has got really black eyes. It makes it look scary. I think it came out pretty good. Lit up's cool. Here's the rest of our wood carvings and Halloween decorure. Should get an idea of what we got going on here. Yeah, look at that. There's a guy in this house. <gasps> There's a squash living in there. And then I don't know if you saw. He's like eight feet high. The jack lantern. That's a wood carved head too. There's an alien hiding in the woods. He'll get you. Look at this traditional. And then we got a scary cyclops. The bat mouth. It's pretty cool. And a woodcarf pumpkin. So I think these turned out pretty cool. That's our setup. I'm trying to make more, but I don't know if I'll have time. <laughs>